where should an employer or school administrator draw the line with rules concerning hairstyles? What if it's a natural expression of self-identity and does not interfere with the work at all? But as we've all seen in the news, hair discrimination is real. And some Georgia lawmakers are out to stop it. John Sherrick has a story all new tonight on Up Late. The latest hair controversy swirling around a high school student who lives near Houston, Texas, told he must cut his hair or he won't be able to participate in graduation ceremonies. The school superintendent at a raucous meeting Monday on MLK Day, insisting the policy has nothing to do with race or hairstyle. Our policy limits uh, the length. Uh, it's been that way for 30 years. But the students' parents and their supporters say he's worn his hair this way since seventh grade, with no one objecting. So why now? Um, everyone has their own identity. Georgia State and Senator I'm Tanya sure Anderson gonna... hopes to pass this bill this year to protect people who choose to have braids, locks, twists, or other textured hairdressing historically associated with an individual's race. I served in the military. I fought for my country. Discrimination hurts us all, whether they're in the workplace, in schools, or even even someone who applies for housing, that they cannot be discriminated against because of the way they choose to express themselves through their hair. At least three other states have similar protections. Violators in Georgia would not face jail, but lawsuits, civil fines, and penalties. In Texas, the student's parents say they may sue the school in federal court to change its hair policy. An issue of deeply personal expression and identity that Georgia lawmakers may resolve for everyone here in the next few weeks.